about? Hi, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Game of Two Halves. I can't believe I remembered what our podcast is called after so long, and uh, it's good to be back. Hey, Vijay. Hey, Vali. Oh man, it's it's been so 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 long. I have seen you and uh, spoken to you on our podcast, and it is called Game of Two Halves. Come on, man, you can't forget that. <laughs> It's always fun, man. I actually missed this because I felt like I've been out of touch uh, from football, even though I watch and enjoy. But you know, yeah. not having to discuss this, share with you, it feel very uh, felt very incomplete. Yeah, I, 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 I was going to say the same thing, man. It, I've just missed this whole thing. You know, I mean, I don't know how many people are actually watching us and stuff, but uh, it was just talking to you and talking about football and learning so much from you and sharing whatever little I knew and. It was just so much fun, and I'm I'm so happy that we are back, yeah. and we'll make sure that you know we don't disappear like this, you know, again for such a long time. Yeah. But just for our just for our viewers who are curious, would would you like to tell them what exactly happened? Where did we go? Ah uh, well, uh, so it happened. Uh, we we I think last recorded in December, and then the transfer window opened. Uh, while Arsenal didn't do any business, uh, I did some business, so I got transferred. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, the price was good, uh, you know, the opportunity was good, the contract laid on the table was good, so uh, officially I had to transfer, so I've transferred from Kuwait to, any guesses? Well, I've moved to the Netherlands. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's why my yeah. house looks very empty. Amazing. Wide. And that's partly one of the reasons why we've been off air, uh, settling down, but I'm back, um, you know, back into training, uh, getting my fitness up. <laughs> and today... So you, were tra- you were training all this time, today you're on the pitch. This, yeah, this is, this is the a pitch. <laughs> yeah, congratulations, uh, Valley, on your transfer, man. Uh, I mean, I already, we already spoke at length about this and it's amazing you made that move and uh, I wish you all the best. Thanks, man. Uh, what have you been up to in this uh, last two months? I've been waiting for you to get back to your fitness, man. <laughs> I've, 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 well, I've been working a little bit on my fitness. I've been waiting for you to get fit and nothing. And then same old man. Just enjoying football. So much football going on and, and, and so much so much uh, sh- nonsense happening in the world also, uh, yeah. which we might speak briefly about uh, at the end of our show. But yeah, just just the same. Yeah, and let's uh, let's get it going. Yeah, and I think uh, just before we uh, move into the show, you know, uh, this month is uh, Women's History Month. We celebrated Women's Day a few days back, and a big shout out to women football. Uh, you know, especially in the UK at least right now, uh, where we cover the Premier League. Uh, women's football is really picking up and we wish them all the best and hope they can inspire a lot of ladies and women and girls all around the world to pick up the sport that we all love. Um, So uh, happy Women's Day, Women's Month to everyone and especially, you know, from us to all the women footballers who keep inspiring people. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Happy Women's Day to all the all the beautiful women out there. And while we are talking about this, the Women's World Cup is going on. Cricket World Cup is underway. Oh and, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think India has won two of their three matches. They lost to New Zealand, but yeah, so that's that's underway as well. So a lot of, right. lot of... Uh, all the best to Team India, Team Blue, yeah. and hope yeah. they come back with the World Cup. Uh, and let's get into it, man. We've missed yeah. a lot of football, like you said. Two months, so much has happened in the world of football, not just around the world, um, but amazing, amazing stuff. So, we'll, I think let's quickly recap uh, where the Premier League has reached, what we have missed out uh, in sharing. Uh, City, believe it or not, are still on top. The gap has closed down a bit, but they are making it difficult for Liverpool. You know, throughout this whole podcast season, I've said that Liverpool are surprising us the way they're performing. They didn't really go and buy a lot of players in the summer or in the January uh, break. But with the players that they have, they've really performed well. But City have made it really, really difficult uh, for the rest of the teams. 
they they've kept up the pace i was just looking earlier i think in terms of uh, their results and stuff like that they haven't they've just lost one game from the last five um uh, city and that's that was, yeah tottenham that was tottenham yeah, yeah Where, i think they scored in the injury time or yeah i think yeah. So. but tottenham always have a thing against city and they somehow pull up a win um uh, surprisingly they lose to shit teams but they managed to beat city uh, city but uh, right now if i'm just looking at the points table city on 28 games with 69 points and uh, liverpool just behind them but the way city are playing i think they are really doing well what are your what, what's your take in the last two months uh, watching city uh at a point i thought city are running away with it uh, i think they had a lead of almost 10 points or more you know obviously liverpool had games in hand but but you still have to win those games so uh i thought that they were running away but uh, liverpool is still there you know I, i think i think this could go right down the wire man i think this can be, could be decided on the last day also this is going to be very very close so liverpool have one game in hand and if they win that game they'll be only 3 points uh, uh, from uh, city so it's going to be super close it's i, I am just excited for for football for next two months it's just going to be amazing I'm I'm just looking at uh, City's games that uh, uh, that they have. It's not really a lot of tough games that they do uh, have left. Um, so I yes. I find I I think they have a more easier run uh, than than the other teams. Uh, if 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 that's what I can say about them. Yeah, yeah, I, I I agree with you. But then you still have to win those matches, right? I mean, you have to go out, you have to play, and there are uh, two other competitions that they are playing in. So yeah. you still have to you still have to go out and and win those games. So it it's going to be tough. And there are uh, games almost uh, uh, I think two times every week now because you have the Champions League, you have the FA Cup, you have the Premier League. Now City doesn't have any games in hand, so so they have played all their games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the other teams, they have to, you know, play midweek and then again on the weekend and again midweek. So it's going to be a little difficult. It's going to be it's going to be uh, uh, fun uh, to see the teams battle out till the end of the season. Moving on to Liverpool, who are currently sitting in second place, uh, are having a phenomenal run. Uh, they've won their last five games, uh, and they don't look like they're going to be stopping. and uh, i think they're playing good football not just uh, winning their games you know it's quite exciting football uh, i i still i think liverpool have a big chance to claim it but like you said you know it's going to go down to the wire and they have no chance or no opportunity to even lose a single game even though they have and, and, and yeah and let's not forget city have to play liverpool once so that yeah. that game is left here yeah. and that will be at etihad so for me i think that will be the decider i think yeah, yeah. whoever wins that game or the result of that game will be the decider for me yeah, yeah. that's true and if you even see uh, in terms of the goal differences i think they are uh, quite high like you know uh, in terms of what the goal difference tally is i don't know if that could be something that could come into play because manchester city have won it previously based on Once. goal differences so that's another interesting thing that's going to happen this year probably yeah that is also neck and neck right i mean i can see city is at 50 and liverpool at 51 so yeah. you never know man it is just just going to be so so exciting super thrill what an exciting time for like the premier league with these two teams battling it out on all fronts like points goal differences and to think of it that this is what the margin would be to win the premier league like one goal could make that difference yeah yeah i yeah, know and and uh, if you f- look at uh, uh, premier league few years back uh, these were two completely different teams right i think you had your united and arsenal and uh, uh, yeah i think mainly it was united and arsenal right yeah. i mean then see how 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 times have changed now but i mean great man great uh, klop uh, and uh, pep they are like i would say two best footballing brains uh, on the planet and amazing what klop has done with uh, liverpool and pep with city true, true. so um and then moving to your club now which is sitting currently into third place chelsea they've 
had a good season with i think was it end of december january where things looked a little bit shaky people started questioning tuchel prematurely i would say uh, what's yeah. your take on it yeah i i i think it started in december we lost uh, we lost that game to west ham away and and december has uh, never been good to us and <laughs> it's like the december curse that we have but uh, yeah and you know i mean in such a competitive league and and with teams like uh, city and liverpool you know who are like at a different level altogether it is very very difficult to you know lose points and then uh, expect to come back so yeah. i think yeah. lost the title race somewhere in december we were doing pretty well before that yeah. but we still are in the fa cup we still are in the champions league so we won the fifa club world cup so we yeah. already have a trophy this season um so yeah a little disappointed that we could not <coughs> compete for the premier league we were and that we had to just fizz out but uh, still uh, a lot to look forward to man uh, yeah. till the end uh, of the season and if i had to say uh, add to it i would say you know uh, the last four games you've kind of bounced back you know because people yeah. were kind of writing off chelsea in a way uh, not in the sense that they are out but you know like they were falling off the top 2 if i would say in terms yeah. of the aggression and in terms of where uh, the the football was but i would say the last four games you, uh, chelsea has really bounced back uh, despite everything that is going around the club and which we will talk in a bit you know i feel chelsea are up there but i think what you said is right uh, they are off from the uh, battle for the i mean for the premier league i think uh, now they are more in a battle of staying in the top 4 because it is getting so uh, hot i still think that they will finish third in the uh, in the league but uh, again you know this season have we seen teams for example which we will talk later manchester united was pitted as maybe even winning the premier league this season and today, and now they are like i don't know where they are i can't even see it on the table sorry <laughs> but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We so, will it will it bigger screens and bigger phones man to see that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey Norwell, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think Chelsea um, have a lot of things going on in uh, other cups, so Premier League. They just need to stay the course and uh, kind of finish what's been started, and uh, you never know. you know uh, what happens in the premier league to be to be realistic uh, league is gone for us like yeah. i just said sometime back but yes there are uh, there is the fa cup and uh, there is the uh, champions league uh, champions league we already won the first leg so mm-hmm. the second leg we are playing next week so yeah there is a lot of a uh, lot of stuff to look forward to yeah what a dream it would be if they go on to you know the finals of the champions league it will be surpassing everything that an english club has done already you guys have won yeah. the champions league twice in a very short right. duration of time um and then you know almost going towards the third one that would be you know a record that which would be very difficult for an english club to kind of match um but yeah. over the, over the few years i would say english clubs have started to dominate the champions league much more than were the spanish italian uh, clubs um, and maybe we can cover that in one of our episodes on you know how champions league has been slowly shifting uh, english uh, over <laughs> years uh, <laughs> yeah you got me excited there man but uh, i'm going <laughs> to i'm going to i'm going to keep my feet on the ground and and uh, just uh, take one match at a time yeah i mean uh, it's not impossible we did it last time uh, but one match at a time and and focus no uh, coming to the badge coming to your team yeah, yeah. arsenal they've been they've been doing pretty okay yeah i think pretty arsenal, well, like- arsenal had a bad january um all on and off the pitch uh, obviously we had the whole abamyang saga abamyang yeah yeah uh, yes. you know the whole captaincy being suspended then flying out to barcelona on the last day having the deal done at 11 pm in the night uh, or what 10 in the night so it it was quite a stressful day in term or a month in terms of arsenal because we didn't get one player in so we were 
I mean, a lot of clubs didn't actually do a lot of yeah. uh, transfer business, but Only Arsenal. Only Newcastle, I think. Yeah. yeah, Arsenal needed players, and we ended up selling our captain and our highest goal-scoring player. Uh, you know, for the last few seasons. Uh, who apparently then started going and scoring four Barcelona hat tricks and games. He's, I think, already scored six goals in less than a month. Yeah. Of uh, yeah. So, uh, so good, to, uh, good for him. I think uh, everyone at Arsenal wishes him all the best and we would miss him. But I think Arsenal have seen this story play out too many times with uh, Thierry Henry, Van Persie, with um, Sanchez, with... Uh, Leb with Flamini. I mean, we this story just keeps continuing. It's not a one-time story. It always happened. Ozil, another one there. So yeah. you know, we always get into these situations for some reason. Um, and that's what's happened off the pitch. On the pitch, I think we had more red cards than goals in the month of January. So I don't know what was happening there. But I think we managed to turn it around. Uh, we got knocked out of the FA Cup. We got knocked out of the Carling Cup, which meant that this year officially we were not in Europe. We were not in any domestic cup, and we are definitely not in the Premier League. So there's zero trophies, silverware to win this year. And the only thing that Arsenal can really go for is the top four, which we are currently sitting in the top four. Um, yeah. But what's exciting? Anyway, I, I would say just to close before uh, yeah. hand over to you is is that um, uh, the football that we're playing is good, is better. Uh, so th that's that's what I would be more uh, interested in. Yeah, no, uh, just, just to add to that, uh, you have three games in hand now. So uh, you should, I mean, who else is competing for top four? It's, it's got to be Manchester United, West Ham, and, and Tottenham is somewhere in the mix. You know, it's very tight. For these four teams, yeah. so in fact, if I'm just checking in the table now, it's it's just three points between Tottenham, who is at seventh on 45, and and Arsenal, who is on uh, fourth with 48. So, and Arsenal have games, and Tottenham have games in hand. So it's it's going to be very very. So there are four teams fighting for that position. You know, I think West Ham will lose out, but it's going to be very close between um, United and uh, Tottenham and Arsenal. Yeah, and the interesting thing okay. in, all of, yeah. in all of this is that we are playing each other as well. We are still yet Arsenal still yet to play uh, Tottenham because of a rescheduled match in January. Yes, yeah. So and then uh, talking about United, uh, did, did you watch the derby last week? <laughs> I I actually I actually watched it here. Uh, I had a few friends. Uh, you know, Liverpool friends in uh, in Kuwait who were uh, obviously hoping that uh, Manchester United win because, win. Uh, you know, of the rivalry. Uh, I didn't want Manchester United to win because I want to secure top four. And then City doesn't disappoint, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I was watching it with my friend and he's like, why are you supporting United? Why are you supporting City? Like, you know, they are our title rivals. I said, I don't care. I don't want United to win. <laughs> anyway, title is out of our hands now. And, and uh, there's no better side than seeing those guys getting trashed the way they did. And that that shot that Mahrez hit on De Gea summed up their season like, you know, boom. <laughs> it was a treat. Oh, shit. Man, the thing game. is, with, with Manchester United, no, if you've seen like a, what do, what do you call those? Line graphs, right? You know, start of the yeah. season, it was like this. And then it just goes like this, like this, and then it stabilizes, goes like this. And 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 you know what's the what's the biggest joke? Their best player was not even the squad. Okay. <laughs> and apparently he was chilling in Portugal in his house, planning his transfer to PSG. <laughs> like, wow, like you know. So I shared I shared a meme on the group. I don't know if you saw that. All all vibes and sui, no trophies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, See, uh, the thing was uh, Ronaldo uh, unfortunately was not playing because he had uh, commitments because he just launched his new underwear brand and so <laughs> <laughs> he had to focus <laughs> on more important things <laughs> priorities bro yeah, priorities. yeah. And, uh, I mean we know what happened with Greenwood and, all, and he was <laughs> 
supposed to be one of their best player this season uh, but then look at players like rashford man i mean he he is he, uh, he's such a important player for england and he's been uh, such a key player for manchester united in the last few years and his body language says it all you know it's just not it's not it's just not happening for him and for the team you know even even uh, when they considered that second or third goal uh, against city they were like there was no there was no fight you know there was no fire to come back you know like it was like like you said yeah it's you can't believe that this was the alex ferguson uh, built manchester united team you know like uh, and uh, it just makes him look even better now right i mean yeah. nobody can do what he did <laughs> i mean ferguson was good but he wasn't this good because these guys are really <laughs> making him look good yeah correct that's that's yeah. really sad but i think we spent too much time talking about manchester so let's quickly move on man i don't want to spoil the rest of my day yeah yeah so uh, the other team was uh, west ham united uh, yeah. they also have been uh, they also have been doing like they have the up and down season uh, but their last game against liverpool was really good they had some very easy chances and they could have drawn that game and that would have opened the gap uh, more between uh, uh, yeah. city and liverpool but uh west ham being west ham yeah i mean uh, they are there in the mix but i, I still feel that uh, yeah. i i feel from december they kind of slumped down and they gave away the lead to arsenal to tottenham to uh, you know they they it felt like they didn't have the fight in them anymore like you know it the the fuel that they had was could take them only so far they're still pushing but i don't see them finishing in the top 4 uh, this season yeah yeah it'll be hard it'll be hard especially with spurs coming back to form now and uh, yes. they play yes. manchester united now they play manchester united uh, this weekend uh, so we'll get to the predictions a little later uh, yes. that kind of sums up our uh, recap of the premier league city still topping it liverpool chasing them down chelsea steadying their ship arsenal manchester united spurs and west ham fighting it for the top 4 that final top 4 position right before we move on uh, to other news what would be your prediction for the top 4 at this stage uh at this stage i would the top 3 will be the same okay city city will uh, i think just edge liverpool because they have slightly better manager i think and they have a slightly better uh team individual wise Mm-hmm. and uh, chelsea will finish third uh, and fourth is going to be super tricky man fourth is going to be super tricky i still think that uh, the way arsenal are playing and because they have three games in hand uh, which is an advantage over the other teams they should be able to secure top four cool so i think i'd go with your prediction as well i think uh, i still see manchester city uh, winning it uh, because they still have the advantage with them liverpool chelsea and then arsenal i think um, spurs and manchester united would be fighting out for the fifth place uh, between them two uh, yeah. moving into uh, some successes for chelsea you guys won the club world cup so congratulations on that thanks bro yeah yeah that was that was a, a good uh, trophy that was our first uh, we had never won that trophy before mm-hmm. and to win the champions league and then again win the club world cup just feels great i mean uh if there's any trophy that says uh, that you are the i mean it's is the club world cup right so yep. champions of the world so i mean nothing more to say just happy with the way the team has been playing and you know it was a good match uh, i was played in the uae uh, yes. it was a really good match well attended yeah. I, had, i had friends of mine who attended the match uh, they loved the whole atmosphere and... my brother was there yeah, yeah. oh really yeah yeah, yeah. Oh wow wow so lucky yeah. you so congratulations again on the world cup uh, win club world cup win i think uh, so, uh, something well deserved and required for chelsea uh, before we come back to uh, chelsea or actually carrying on from chelsea's world cup win to their carabao cup loss but yeah. what an entertaining game of football man i mean I was happy Chelsea lost. Don't get me wrong. I mean, an exciting, entertaining game of football, Carabao Cup. Um, I um, and I had mixed reaction, man. But I always have this rivalry with Chelsea. Uh, 
for some reason uh, so i was kind of happy they lost because um, but now i feel sad uh, that they lost because of what's <laughs> happening to them more of pity i would say but uh, but that, i mean as a neutral fan if i have to really honestly give my comment it was an amazing game of football right till that last kick uh, yeah and i almost completely blame chelsea for their loss um and i blame uh, tuchel uh, more for the loss uh, than anybody else because i think what he pulled up in that uh, last few minutes of bringing in kepa was the most idiotic move i've seen from a manager no uh, maybe I, i can understand why you're no, saying that for me mendy mendy is a much better keeper uh, in terms of his mental space and attitude because the minute that kepa is- came came on he was like and he didn't do anything he touched one ball from 11 bloody kicks and the way he was walking around thinking like you know he is the best keeper in the world the attitude he was giving he was the only guy on that field who had attitude besides the other 21 players see i am not going to blame tuchel okay if he won it uh, you would have said completely opposite that that was a no, master stroke no, no, no. So i would say they were the lucky best so we could make he is such a genius guy and you know all that no i would not we did that i am don't take it too I, far he is a genius guy <laughs> no i mean uh, come on everyone would have lauded that move right they would have said like yeah uh, that was a brilliant uh, move by him now in hindsight we've lost that game okay kepa was the one who kicked the ball out but Uh, I don't. I don't blame him. It was a. It was okay. a game. Let only the team that made one mistake had to lose. That's it. So and, and penalties. And if you've known me all this while, you know that penalties is fluke for me. So if a game goes into penalties after so long, uh, and then you win or lose, it's fifty-fifty. You know, it's not no really no like no a problem. You know, even when I play FIFA, I don't play penalties. I rather uh, like you know. declare the game as a draw then play penalty because i find it bullshit but it's also great entertainment to watch and play of penalty course. because it's the ultimate test of your mental strength and your physical abilities but let me ask you differently if it was mendy or it was kepa who do you think had a better chance to win forget everything else in you you are a chelsea fan you seen mendy play week in week out You seen his temperament. You seen how he's already saved penalties. See, we lost. No, no. Uh, there is no. See, I'll tell you. There is no uh, as good a keeper Mendy is, uh, and and Kepa has been doing well in penalty shootouts for us. But uh, there is no guarantee that Mendy would have saved any of the uh, penalties. And second, there is no guarantee that Mendy would have scored that penalty. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, I don't blame anybody. For me, I wasn't really disappointed because we lost. Yeah, I mean it's a trophy and it would it would be nice to win. But we played the game to the best we could, and so did Liverpool. We had clear chances to win the game. Uh, Mount had a very easy chance. Pulisic had a chance in the first five minutes. So so those are the things I would probably you know feel a little sad about. But otherwise. it's fine i mean these things happen man and uh, we we move on that's it fun and to watch uh, what 20 penalty shots taken i mean you don't get to see that every day exactly. big, two yeah. big european giants not just english like uh, it 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 goes to show literally like if you consider all the added time everything it was literally the last kick of the game because yeah. chelsea was taking the penalty second right yeah so it was actually the last kick and if that went in we would start again from uh, number 1 so it was actually like it went down to the last kick of the yeah. game and that's where we lost but i mean that's the most football you can play in a exactly. real football match in the game exactly that's what i was saying yeah yeah true true uh, but kudos to liverpool so you know maybe this way manchester city wins the premier league uh, liverpool wins the uh, carabao cup carabao. Uh, chelsea wins the club champions world, league uh, club <laughs> world cup who who else is left in the champions league which english team uh city is there city is there who else is there just city is there Is Manchester? And, uh, yeah, I think the, United also there. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. maybe they can win the Champions League. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Nah, nah. I, I thought we already had enough fun on the show, dude. <laughs> but this was the best one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. if, if they go to it, this will become a worldwide beam. <laughs> I will take that risk. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, we're just uh, going into something a little more intense or serious. You know, everyone's definitely aware of what the world situation is. Uh, on one side, we've got COVID, which is still a big threat to the world and taking out lives. On the other side, we've got uh, an actual war that is playing out between two big countries. Um, and we, together, I think we both we both wish and hope for peace. and uh, you know that no more lives are lost so our prayers to everyone who is involved in this around the world not just in the conflict uh, zone but around the world so we pray for peace for them um uh, we don't have much to offer or say on it but we just hope that a better sense prevails but it has affected the premier league and more so it's affected uh, you and your club chelsea what was your initial thoughts or reactions on that I was I was almost in tears, man. When I when I saw the news uh, that uh, Roman was sanctioned, and then uh, these are the repercussions uh, Chelsea could have, you know, as a club. Uh, I was in tears, man. This is a club I've supported for almost twenty years now. I have visited the stadium. I have been like very lucky to have gone there, and uh, just to see all this crumbling in front of me for what? Like you know, for nothing. For somebody who wants to have a war with another country. and just because our owner was uh, our uh, close with him and happens to be from that country it's it's really sad i just hope that uh, we are able to uh, sell the club uh, and and there are uh, people who care about the club and want to you know invest in it and and not only uh, for the sake of buying it as a business but then uh, we don't want to end up how arsenal or how manchester united uh um uh, are you know uh, right now you know just converted into a business uh, or money making machine and not worry about the football because roman was very passionate he wanted to win trophies and he was not scared to take harsh decisions he was not scared to spend money so uh, we need somebody who is passionate about football somebody who wants to win he has that you know winning mentality so but that is that is the next step the 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 primary thing is we want to play football man we want to watch football as fans uh and and i hope we can do that you know it's it's really it's 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 been a really uh tough few days for us i've been talking to my brother i've been talking to my uh, friends who are chelsea fans and, and it's it's been going uh, i mean <laughs> i don't know what to tell you i just hope that we can resolve this situation quickly that's it i think uh, my my take on it on, on in all seriousness you know uh, club rivalry football rivalry is something more on a football front you would never want to see a football club which means a lot more to a lot of people like us you know ordinary people who have a daily life uh, yeah. it means a lot more to people like us so you wouldn't want that to be affected you know you wouldn't want the Correct. football to be affected yes politics is real the war is real the situations are real but when it starts to affect daily lives of people in corners of the world where you know football is loved and appreciated it just shows that you know how 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 connected we are as a world and how important yeah. certain small decisions can be yeah that 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 is what uh, i was going to say also if he if he end up with somebody uh, like uh, the arsenal owner then you know uh, it's going to be a really really sad sad situation for us because uh, and and we know it everybody knows it there are uh, uh, numbers that show it in the last 10 12 years we have been the best club in the premier league you know yeah. uh, we won the most trophies uh, uh, not only in the premier league but also in the champ- two champions league and so it's there you know for everyone to see we are on that uh, rise you know and then for this to happen uh, it really hurts man and uh, i don't know just hope for the best yeah and you know it's not and if people are thinking that it's something that will happen end of the season that's affecting no it's affecting right now last yeah. news as of last night was that barclays has suspended the bank accounts of chelsea accounts so yeah. which, if for just to make people understand 
here there are costs that are paid daily weekly uh, you know these are not things that can be paid once in a year so we are talking about the bus driver who drives the bus we are talking about fuel in the bus yeah. we are talking about yeah. uh, you know there's so many things because people work on uh, weekly wages daily wages which affect the small functioning of a club right now that is at risk um, yeah. you know i understand player contracts payments of money those things big things big people always get sorted out somewhere or the other it's the small guys who get affected but that's something that will affect the club uh, but despite all of that and this is what i've been trying to say throughout the podcast chelsea have still been doing well they've played i think two or three games since this news has broken out of no only one only one uh, so, norwich i'm talking about when uh, roman initially uh, yeah, yes. wants to sell the club it's not yes, an easy yes. news obviously yes. they would be aware of a lot more things that's happening behind the scenes than we are so yes. this thing is not coming up today it's been happening for the last two weeks you know ever since yeah. the whole war started so people are aware that these steps are happening in the background but despite this the players who are much more closer to the club than anybody else are performing well so kudos to chelsea and i hope the situation gets resolved you know soon it's good to see players are focused on football and not affected by what's going on outside so yeah and uh, really you know just on the uh, to end this uh, segment of piece you know what some of the football clubs have done some of the players have done across you know to show solidarity uh, to come out with the unifying messages really great and uh, we we are in support of you know this kind of yes. unity of people coming together and one more you point. are coincidentally wearing ukrainian colors also i think oh yeah right <laughs> <laughs> and so are you in a way <laughs> just missing the yellow blue yes <laughs> yeah and then moving into our final segment into a little uh, you know getting out of this grim mode uh, we have yeah. two interesting games coming up uh, one is uh, and it I, I, actually these two games have a big say on what the top four would look like uh, yeah. and yeah. first match is united versus spurs uh what is your take what are your predictions for the game uh considering recent form i think tottenham should win this one because uh, united are in shambles and uh, that's that defeat against uh, city will not taste good man and and uh, uh, I, i don't think uh, like we spoke about it some time back their players are not in that frame of mind to get that out of their head quickly and you know move on so i feel that uh, Tottenham should should win this game. All right. Yeah, I mean, given the way Tottenham have been playing the last few games, I do feel that they have a better chance of winning this game. Uh, if you had to ask me my predictions, it would be probably a two-one to Tottenham. I'll go with uh, I'll go with three-one. I'll go with three-one Tottenham. Wow, that's a lot of confidence in, in Tottenham, man. <laughs> They won six-zero, dude. Yeah, and, uh, United yeah, talk back. <laughs> that's that's Tottenham man. They win, they win one, they lose another one, they win another one. Yeah, no, they are on the roll. They beat City, then they uh, um, they yeah, won. They the lost. Club. They lost some yeah. easy games as well. It's not like they. Ah, they lost one game. Yeah. Yeah, they lost. I think to Norwich or someone. No, no, I don't remember. They lost one game, but yeah. I don't. Know. I don't watch their matches. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> they lost to Burnley one zero. Burnley. <laughs> Yeah, they almost getting relegated. <laughs> uh, but if you had asked me, I don't know who should win. I would, I would, if you, I would definitely want both to draw a nil-nil draw. <laughs> that's that's my prediction. A nil-nil draw. <laughs> no, that's our expectation. That's my expectation. That's not... <laughs> but uh, okay, talking about that, you have a big game coming up, right? So Arsenal yeah. is playing two times this week, this game week, and your second game is with Liverpool at home. What yeah. is your? I'm not going to ask you on the first game that Leicester. I think you should win that easily. Yeah. But Liverpool, man. As much as I would love to say Arsenal are going to win it, I don't see them winning this game um, that easily. Uh, but my heart says because it's a home game the form we are in and we have a point to prove to liverpool uh, over the last few years 
Uh, it's always been an entertaining game, but Liverpool have somehow always trumped us. But this time, I'm going for an Arsenal win, and I'm going for three one. Three one. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether the last time Liverpool considered three goals, dude. Uh, but three uh, one is very very bold, man. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I. I uh, this is going to be a very close game, and I love watching these. Uh, you know, these uh, top of the teams uh, yeah. games at Emirates. Yeah. They are like always this high intensity, high octane, and you know the crowd is crazy. So I, I love watching these games at the Emirates. You know, it's another thing Arsenal loses most of the times, but uh, <laughs> it's entertaining, super entertaining. I think Liverpool might just edge man, and you guys. Yeah, since Liverpool are playing two times, they played midweek Champions League. I think I'll go for a two-one. Liverpool. So, see, the reason I'm 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 more, uh, a little more confident is if you watch the last game, Liverpool versus uh, Arsenal. You know, things were much different for us then, and things didn't go right at certain stages. Uh, whenever we have played them, uh, right now I feel yeah. Arsenal is a little more stable in terms of who their to- uh, front eleven are. We're getting a little bit more goals from all around the pitch. You know, we've got Odegaard scoring, we've got Saka scoring, we've got Martinelli scoring, we've got Pepe scoring, we've got Emil Smith Rowe scoring, and Lacazette who scored didn't score. So I feel that, you know uh, we are a little more confident going into the game. Plus, it's a home game, and our record this year has been consistently better. Uh, what? is the factor that is keeping me a little bit down is we've not really performed against any of the top five this uh, this year. City, Chelsea, uh, Manchester United, Liverpool. We've really not, uh, I don't think so, we've defeated any one of them. So that's the only downfall. But I do I do still hope Arsenal is going to win this. We'll come to know next week when we return for another episode of the Game of Two Halves. Uh, but it's been real fun, Vijay, uh, and it's Amazing, great to be back. Yep, I had fun, I had a ball talking about football, talking to you, and then just uh, you know, pouring our hearts out. Um, uh, and- uh, for everyone watching, whoever watches this, please let your friends know that we're back. Share this video, uh, like, share, subscribe to our channel and we'll be back next week till then thank you everyone thank you vijay and see you next week thank you have a great weekend bye what 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 what